All right, so keep the sales process simple, okay? Uh, introduce, state your intention up front, present the value of proposition, ask to follow up and set a future time, close with a handshake and a smile. And as I say down here at the bottom, if you're just listening to this on the audio, I say this in the slide, no BS allowed. And I'm gonna keep this clean, of course, in case your kids are listening uh, or somebody that's offended by bad language is listening, but no BS allowed. Do not be a BS artist. They are they are seen so well in this industry and, and are picked out quickly, okay? And they don't last, all right? Uh, people that are genuine and authentic are the people that make a living at this. They're the people that make a brand at this. They're the people that make a name for themselves in this. Genuine, authentic, authenticity, all right? So introduce intention, state the intention up front, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish with them, present the proposal to them of what you you'd like to do and trade for their product service or money and then ask to follow up and set a future time you have to control the follow-up i learned that from ryan dorn who is a um, uh, media sales uh, expert and a media sales trainer um you've got to set up the follow-up okay you can't just expect them to call you back like i said in the last uh the last slide you can't just expect them to go oh, okay yeah sure i'll just i'll follow up with you in two weeks and expect them to call they will never call okay they typically don't sometimes they do i may be wrong but uh, close with a handshake and a smile, solidify that relationship so they remember you when they get back from the show, okay? Or solidify that on the phone so they remember you after they hang up the phone. Half of the time, you're going to be forgotten anyway, no matter what you do, okay? That's why you have to stay in front of them. That's why you have to stay persistent and polite and follow up constantly. That is so important in this business, guys. Uh, handshake and a smile is hard to beat, all right? That's, that, does not, that shows genuineness and um, authenticity very very well as long as your authenticity is real for sure so here's some things to remember uh, as I say at the bottom of this slide, we all listen to WIIFM, and I learned that from Brian Tracy many years ago. What's in it for me? People listen to what's in it for me. The general rule is that people care about what you offer and how what you offer will benefit themselves and their company. People don't necessarily care about you. It's said that 90% of the people in the world um, don't care about your problems. The other 10% are glad you have them, okay? Uh, that seems kind of silly, but uh, it's true, all right? People, you know, how, how many people in your life do you care about their problems, okay? Uh, you, you can hardly care about your own, all right? And we all have problems. Nobody, like I said in the, in the other videos, nobody's figured all this out completely. So uh, Theodore Roosevelt said this, and then uh, Zig Ziglar picked it up um, from him, I think, because they're both quoted as saying this. Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. I have to drive this point home, guys, okay? People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So important, so vitally important. And I say that because it's true, all right? I've seen it happen over and over again. People are going after a pro staff sponsorship or trying to build a brand or whatever the case may be. If you don't care about them and their needs and what they're going through, they can't care about you. It's just human nature. It's just the way that things work, all right? Nobody cares about how much you know until they know how much you care and you care about their, their problems, their situation, their, uh, their, their limitations, their motivations, so on and so forth. Um, that's just something I picked up from, uh, from Zig Ziglar and, and Teddy Roosevelt over the years. And that has helped me tremendously because I have to realize I have to put the best foot forward. I have to care more about what they're going through and what they are important, what, what is important to them and what their goals and dreams are. Okay. If it is to scale a brand, you need to care about helping them scale that brand. Okay. As a general rule, people care about what you can offer and how what you can offer will benefit them and their company. All right, that's important. That's it's simple. It sounds really dumb at first, okay? But the truth is, nobody cares about you until you care about them. All right, until you can show how much you care about them, until they can know that they can trust you about with, trusting you with their goals and dreams and what they have in mind. This is relationships 101, guys. This is just basic stuff that will help you in life. It will help you through this course. It will help you um, as you go through talking to people and developing relationships and being successful in this industry. Um, that We all listen to WIIFM. It's true. What's in it for me? What am I getting out of this relationship? What am I getting out of the proposition? That sounds really cold, but it's human nature and it's true all right 
Um, the, the whole deal about, you know, what, what's in it for me is basically people are always trying to figure out what is going to be the benefit of this person moving into my life. Is it going to be worthwhile to have them in my life professionally or personally? Okay. That's just the way relationships are built. I've been building relationships with people overseas here lately, just to branch out, just to get to know their culture, just to get to know their, their life and what's important to them. And I've been doing product reviews and stuff like that from quality companies that come from China and other places and develop relationships with them because I can have pretty much anything I want, you know, when it comes to the flashlights or guns or knives or not guns, but you know what I mean? Um, uh, flashlights, knives, uh, hardware, gear, hunting gear, fishing gear, all that other kind of stuff. If I just show them how I can do a good Amazon review for them, if I can show them how I can build a good relationship with it, but I give, 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 then ask. Uh, I don't go into the relationship asking like anybody owes me anything, acting like um, I'm somebody and they should know who I am, all right? It never works out that way. I've seen that happen over and over again, for sure. What companies are really asking you on this next slide, I say, um, will they make me more than they cost me? That's the bottom line of all this. It's business, okay? Uh, personal relationships can be business-like. Uh, professional relationships certainly are business-like. And if you go to work for any employer, that's the question they're asking when they hire you. Is this person going to make me more than they cost me? Are they going to be a worthwhile investment of my time and resources to be a value to me? Are they going to be a value to the company? Are they going to be a value so on and so forth? So if you're on the company side trying to get um, you know, a brain launched and something like that, that's a very crucial question question to ask is, is somebody going to be a value to my business and they're going to make me more than they cost me? When an employee is hired at a business, that's the question the employer is asking. When a relationship is formed for pro staff sponsorships or whatever the case may be, um, and brand building, uh, that's the question you've got to ask yourself in entering relationships. And that's the question that advertisers and sponsorships and pro staff uh, leaders and stuff like that are going to be asking in the back of their mind. Will they make me more than they cost me? Keep that in mind, you will do successful. Stay humble, stay uh, authentic, stay genuine, okay? And stay real, all right? Keep things real. Give first, ask for the business later, follow up constantly, be professional in all that you do, and you will go far, I promise you guys that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video series and uh, for tuning in. And please tell a friend about the course so they can purchase it and get the same value that you did off of this if you think this is valuable, and I hope you do. So thanks so much. Last thing is the outdoor industry resume. This is something everybody needs to put together if you want to be successful in this realm. Um, and that is the um, basic resume portfolio. Now mine, I just kind of threw together years ago. All right. It's not super professional. It's not, it wasn't critiqued by anybody for fancy um, copy editing and that kind of stuff. But I basically went through and wrote it as professionally as I possibly could. Um, basically, I just state who I am. I'm an outdoor industry professional and pro staff. Uh, my website, phone number, email, make it easy for people to find and contact you. My educational background is Texas Lutheran University. Do y'all believe I have a music degree? All right. I'm in the outdoor industry and I have a music degree, <laughs> but I am qualified because I've learned, like I say, by the School of Hard Knocks and studied a lot of uh, professionals in this realm and have kind of got a second degree, if you will, uh, for the School of Hard Knocks on how to do all this stuff. But I have a four-year college degree, so that always helps to show that I have a bachelor's degree in something. Uh, show my own business, show Texas Fishing Game, I'm a fishing hotspot reporter, contributing editor, as well as feature article um, writer, and uh, then uh, Big Game Online Magazine, which I don't even know if they still exist anymore. They were a big, um, I was a contributing uh, author for that as far as being a uh, feature article contributor. Global Outfitters the University, that deal didn't work out. I've got a lot of deals that haven't worked out over the years, but I have the experience from those deals. Um, I'll give you some streaming, you know, streaming TV situations that I've had in the past and other things that, uh, that I've done well, uh, that I've done well on, but have not panned out. And, um, you know, there, there's a couple of them on this resume you're looking at right now that just have not done well for me. And, uh, but they still are experienced. They still are experienced. So no matter if you fail 
or if you succeed, it's experience you can put on your resume. Okay, as long as you don't burn any bridges, as long as you leave in good standing your relationships, you probably will not get burned uh, by putting those kind of things on your resume. But this is just an example, and this is multiple pages long. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the pages. This is just the front page I took, but I've got a picture of me, a picture of my Warnke Enterprises logo, that being the company that's behind all this, and I'm the owner and principal of. And, um, you know, I just basically talk about my experience in the industry. And it's not hard to come up with one of these if you have any pro staff positions, because in the other pages of this thing, I have other uh, pro staff positions that I do. And anyway, that's it. Anything like that is just a benefit. Anything like that is just a constant uh, help. Uh, to your resume to show if you have sponsorship, if you have pro staff positions, you have anything like that, you have you know something to work with. You have some kind of value to show off. Uh, on your resume and uh, so this is kind of like a work resume but what it really is is a resume to show you have the experience and the fortitude and the um, and the aptitude to work well with the company and that's what I've done and this resume has led to countless sponsorships that I've gotten over the years uh, pro staff free product uh, money I mean all that stuff um, so, I mean, all that basically comes with a lot of working and trying, um, and, and basically trying a lot of things that may not work. And like I say, a couple of things in the, the bottom of this resume did not work out, but I mean, um, they still are, are pieces of experience that I use to put a resume together. So definitely keep that, keep that in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching, reading and listening. We'll see you on the next video.